nothing like some fresh PPE, especially Corona time. We don't want to play around with that. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, it's Christina. In today's video, I have a little bit of something different for you guys. For those of you who don't know, I'm also a dental hygienist, so shout out to all my dental hygiene students out there. I promise you're going to get through school. So I'm here to support you and show you how to, step by step, give the best prophylaxis that you can. I know that my transition into clinic was not an easy one. The program at my school, we had pre-clinic. And we learned how to use all the instruments, learn all the working ends, and we only use them on two or three teeth at a time. And after we passed all those exams, we went into actual clinic and worked on actual patients. And let me tell you, that was stressful. I was so lucky my mom was my first patient. She supported me and she forgave me <laughs> for the first experience. And I've seen her for many clinics since then. I've done infiltrations on her. But not everybody has a family member come in for their first cleaning. And patient wants to see that you've been doing this for a long time and you're confident in your skills, right? And also your instructors want to see that as well, even though they didn't show you how to do a full cleaning straightforward in the mouth. They want to see what you can come up with. So I want to give you those skills to be the most confident rock star hygienist you can be stepping into clinic. So first things first, invest in a pair of loops with a light if you can. I promise you it's going to change your whole dental world. Q-Optix, literally, thank you for changing my life. I'm going to link them down below so that all you students can check them out. You're going to see all those little tiny markings on the probe without any problems. Nothing like some fresh PPE, especially Corona time. We don't want to play around with that. All of my demos are brought to you by my little patient, Leo the Lion, today. The first instrument I'm using is my 1112 Explorer, my friend. It's going to give you a brief survey of areas you need to focus on during your cleaning. And the key is to let it literally do the work for you. It has so much tactile sensitivity that all you need to do is lightly graze over the line angles and notice if you feel any presence of calculus. It's not meant for you to overthink it. Most likely, if you're not feeling any calculus, guys, it's time to move on to the next surface. Just make sure you're going far enough subgingively. It's kind of like looking for buried treasure, especially when you're at the contacts. Make sure that you spend a little bit more time there. But you're going to take notice of the tooth and the surface where you're picking up calculus. And doing this step is going to prevent you from overscaling or overworking the tissue so that you could maximize your time and be most efficient during your cleaning. Step by step, here's our profi. Step number one, ask the patient if they would feel more comfortable with some topical. Patient always comes first, 20% benzocaine over the counter. If they're not sure about if they like it, just tell them they could change their mind at any point during the cleaning and just ask them to raise their hand while you have instruments in their mouth so that they're safe. But to apply it, just dry the area with some gauze, make sure that there's no saliva there. Apply a little bit, don't need a lot, and just spread it all over. It's going to start working in about two minutes or so. For the Capitron, you're going to want to make sure you have your suction. You're going to bend your suction. Sorry that I don't have one on me, but you're going to bend it like so and retract the cheek and follow along as you're scaling. Or you could twist it and leave it on the opposite side of the mouth that the patient is turned towards so the water could fall in that direction. But I prefer to retract the cheek because I feel like less water collects and they could just close down after every few teeth and that a whole bunch of water isn't collecting in the back of the mouth. But you can do that if you need to use your mirror or you need both of your hands. That's when you can place your suction in the mouth without holding it. this 
start off with the lingual mandibular anterior spur. This is the most common site for calculus deposits to collect because the submandibular salivary glands hold a lot of calcium and phosphate ions that circulate in our saliva and they mineralize and collect on the backs of our front teeth. So even if you have a macular oral hygiene, it's not you. Everybody has it. I'm going to be doing a Cavitron demo for you guys using this Cavitron dupe. It's so funny how much it resembles the Cavitron because of how sharp it is and even vibrates. But just a disclaimer, I don't even know why they sell this. Please do not purchase this. This is not safe. I wanted to do a great Cavitron demo for you guys because I don't have one with me. You risk causing damage to your gum tissue and your enamel tooth structure, especially if you don't have knowledge of proper dental anatomy. To adapt your Cavitron, you're going to be looking at the tip of your Cavitron where it curves and the long axis of the tooth. You want to think of this as a crane in a toy machine grabbing a toy when you're grabbing a piece of calculus out of the gums. You want to use as these amount of movements as possible to cause the least amount of damage to the gum tissue, yet be effective. For the interproximal surfaces, you want your tip to be horizontally across the tooth always. So we're going to look at our tip, and it's horizontally across that tooth. And when we're subgingively, either facial or lingual, we want to be parallel. So we're flush, and the tip is vertically across the long axis of the tooth. So it's parallel. So perpendicular, parallel, perpendicular again at the interproximal. There's certain clock positions that you could see those certain areas in before you move on to the next clock position instead of playing musical chairs and going back and forth and wasting a lot of time. So from a certain clock position, I'm going to tell you what areas you could clean before you move on to the next. We're going to start off with the lower anterior section, tooth numbers 22 to 27. On the distal of 22, we're starting off interproximal using very light pressure, tapping at any deposits, coming up perpendicular, and then we're coming down here angling it like a probe to be parallel to the tooth at the subgingival and you want to use multi-directional horizontal and vertical overlapping strokes then at the contact here on the mesial of 22 we want to hop over to the distal of 23 without taking our instrument out so that we're causing the least damage to the gum tissue and we're not lacerating the tissue but we're getting that wedge of calculus stick at the contact. And again, we're perpendicular. And then we're angling again, rolling with our thumb and index finger to be parallel. We're gonna repeat this up until tooth number 27. You could have your patient turn slightly away from you. Have your patient close down every two to three teeth if you're seeing a lot of water. If you're suctioning, you just have them close down. We're going to clean as many surfaces as we can in the 12 o'clock position. We just cleaned the lower lingual anterior sextant and we're going to clean the lower facial anterior sextant in the same way. We're going to be working in the away direction this time so we're going to be working from 27 back to 22. Teeth numbers 6 to 11 on the maxillary arch we're going to do in the same fashion. So we're going to clean all those surfaces using the Cavitron at 12 o'clock.
I know our books mentioned for us to scale or be toward surfaces from the 8 o'clock position, but personally, for the maxillary paddle surfaces, I prefer to scale both towards in a way from the 12 o'clock position because that's what's worked best for me over time. So feel free to do what works best for you, but I prefer the 12 o'clock for the maxillary paddle surfaces. surfaces at 12 o'clock are done we're gonna hop to 8 o'clock and finish off our toward surfaces for tooth number 6 to 15 and 22 to 27 at 8 o'clock for the right hand clinician and 4 o'clock for the left hand clinician little by little after each tooth has the patient turn a little bit more away all done with eight o'clock my favorite position of all time nine o'clock which is nine o'clock for right hand clinicians and three o'clock for left hand clinician there's so many surfaces you could clean from here and they're very easy because the teeth aren't as curved as the anterior teeth, the posterior are a little bit thicker and easier to adapt for your cavitron. The patient is going to be turned slightly away from you and we're using direct vision. So just to review, nine o'clock right-handed clinician, upper right, lower right facial, and upper left, lower left lingual. Three o'clock for the left-hand clinician, direct vision, upper left, lower left facial, upper right, lower right lingual. So it's just the opposite. knock out the same quads that are on the same sides but I choose to just do direct vision in the same arch so I like to get the mandible done because it's a little heavier but now I'm going to work on the maxilla almost done with our cavitron we just finished our surfaces that require direct vision and now we're gonna switch over to indirect vision. So patient turns slightly towards you. Right hand clinician is at 11 o'clock. Surfaces are the upper right, lower right lingual's and the upper left, lower left buckles and reverse for the left hand clinician. So the patient is still turned towards you. Upper right, lower right buckles and the upper left, lower left lingual's. And since I'm right handed, I'm going to be at 11 o'clock lower right linguals to the lower left buckles.
done with our Cavitron, and it's a great idea to have your patient rinse really well. We're going to move on to hand instruments just to fine tune everything. You're going to want to pick up a piece of gauze. I usually wrap it around my mirror. Have my universal 1314 Tourette. It's very versatile to be used on anteriors and posteriors. It's really good if you don't have a lot of time and also if you don't have a lot of instruments on hand because most instrument kits do have this. This has become my favorite instrument. It used to be my least favorite because I didn't know how to activate it. And the difference is when you're using other instruments, usually calculus removal is done at 40 degrees, but this requires a little bit more of a tilt because it's at 60 degrees. We're gonna put the V end towards the distal, same principle. Close in at zero degrees, insert, and then open at 60 degrees for calculus removal. Feel around subgingively to see what the cavitron did not remove underneath the gums. You don't want to go like this that's going to damage the gum tissue. You want to anchor on to any deposits or ledges that are underneath. And once you have loosened up some of that deposit, scoop it up. You can use your universal scaler on your anterior teeth as well, as long as you're adapting it like Pac-Man on the tours and away surfaces. But I prefer to use my H5 sickle scaler for this. Guys, this has been my favorite instrument from day one. It gets the teeth super clean on the anteriors. It's used super gingerly and it's in most instrument kits as well. So you're gonna angle this like Pac-Man tours and away. If you don't have time to go back in your instrument kit and you have your universal in your hand, that's okay. But I always make time for my sickle. You're just going to angle it kind of like 40 degrees. The universal is at 60 degrees to activate it for calculus removal. And same goes for the bottom. When you're cleaning the linguals, I like to use this little small tip here. If there's little spicules of calculus, just to make everything super smooth. And I also like to go in a little bit interproximally with it. I feel like it gets all those pieces of calculus out. Last but not least, the 204S. It's in so many instrument kits along with the H55 and the Universal Curette. It looks like a twin up against the Universal Curette. They're both used on posterior teeth, but the difference is that the H55 is only allowed to be used above the gum line and it has that pointy end. The Universal has a rounded toe, so it's super important if you sharpen your instruments not to mistakenly sharpen that rounded toe because it's meant to be like that to go underneath the gum line and the 204s is not however i do recommend it for beginner students because it is a lot easier to use since you don't have to angle it as much it can be used at 40 degrees and not at that 60 degrees basically you're gonna put the v to the distal as usual for the working ends you're just going to work above the gum line and then turn to come back here. So we're gonna work this way. Just make sure that you're using a lighter pressure because it can be really sharp, but it does an amazing job. Just makes the job a lot more complete. I always use it even when I do have my universal. I use both of them. That's it guys, I hope that you enjoyed my tips and they were helpful for you on how to use your skills once you return back to clinic. I know that being quarantined during dental hygiene school must be super overwhelming because dental hygiene school is rough enough as it is and a lot of people are not aware of that, but just know that I'm aware of that. I know everything that you're going through. So if you need any help, feel free to reach out to me and refer back to my video to give you some motivation. Thank you so much for watching.